Hello, thanks for joining me again for another Azure Networking video. In this one, we're going to talk about multi-region use of PrivaLink, this time with Azure SQL as our destination PaaS resource. This is the whiteboard that we're going to use with same topology as we had before. So if you're coming in fresh to this video, maybe you've just found it or you've clicked on the link, it's probably best to go back and watch the previous video where we talked about the exact same topology, the two regions, primary, secondary, with Azure Storage, where we highlighted the considerations for whether or not you should use a single global Azure DNS private zone, as they are a global resource and can be used in that way, or you had separate regional stacks for your Azure DNS private zones. And in that video, we showed how with storage, when you fail over a GRS account and it becomes an LRS account, keep using the same FQDN, and if you had a single common global zone, you had some DNS changes to make in the BCDR region down failure scenario to make use of private endpoints in the alternate region. What I want to highlight here is an example of a service where it uses a different mechanism within Azure Public DNS, wherein you can use that single common zone and you don't have to worry about DNS. And I'll talk about why that is the case. So this is our topology. We've got two regions, West US and East US. Inside of each of those regions, I've got a SQL server. So SQL hyphen WS over here in West US and SQL hyphen EU SS East US over here in the East US as a region. See the two resources here. And inside of those server, when I click on the primary Azure SQL server here, you see I've set up a failover group. This is the mechanism that SQL uses for failover between Azure regions. And you see I've called it SQL hyphen FOG for failover group. When we click in there, you can see very similar GUI actually to how Azure Storage demonstrates the GRS failover. You see I've got primary, secondary, and I've got my FQDN that I use to look up and access that failover group. And how we manifest that in public DNS is worth paying attention to. So let's dig into that now. But if I look up my failover group FQDN in public DNS, let's see what happens. I look up the FQDN and the first thing that happens is I get a redirect here to SQL WUS. That's because currently the WUS, West US SQL Server is my primary endpoint. It's serving the data. And then I get a C name to private link. We know that story from before. If I'm coming from a link VNet, I will then start being served by the records inside of this Azure DNS private zone, which I've got linked to both regions here. Inside of that private zone, I've got uh, a record for my West US endpoint. So 172.16.4.6 in my primary region. And I've got another A record for a different endpoint, which is my SQL East US server, which is pointing to a private endpoint in my other region. So again, if I'm coming from a link VNet, at that point, this C name here will effectively take me into the world of Azure DNS private zones, and this private endpoint will be returned as per the A records there. If I'm not coming from a private VNet that's linked to my Azure DNS private zone, then the normal C name redirection that happens in public DNS will occur. So the, you see here, there's some redirection that happens. Ultimately, it returns a public IP. So under normal conditions here, if my virtual machine in the green box is looking up my failover group listener, it's going to get back the private endpoint here. It's 4.6, and we can demonstrate that. The really important thing to notice here when I do that lookup, you see how the redirection happens here in public DNS, so that the redirect from what I was trying to access for the specific region that's serving the data happens in public DNS due to the way in which we're using that masquerade FQDN with failover groups before private link gets a hold of it. But private link gets a hold of it then and serves up the 4.6 A record in my primary region. Similarly, from my red region, from my East US virtual machine, 
if I do a lookup, I also get back the same private endpoint of 4.6 in my primary region. So it's important to call out that, even though I will demonstrate shortly that Azure SQL failover groups don't have the same concern as storage when it comes to using a single global DNS zone, you have got an element of suboptimal behavior here because if this virtual machine here is sending traffic to the failover group, it is ultimately going to be using this private endpoint over here. So it'll go to this zone after it's gone to public DNS and got back the West US endpoint, and it will be returned this endpoint here, which will then allow the VM to establish comms. Again, inter-region connectivity, VWAN, Express Route, Global VNet peering is going to be leveraged there. It's not using private link to go across region. In some respects, this behavior as it stands at the moment under normal conditions, under normal BAU operations, is very similar to storage access. It's all working fine with a single zone. It's accessing via a private endpoint in the green box, which can be suboptimal from the secondary region, but nothing's different here. Let's see how things change compared to storage when we do a failover and utilize the red region. Okay, I've completed that failover now. Interesting to note this happens much quicker than storage because all we're doing here is actually swapping some public DNS information. Same failover group FQDN, right? So if my application's making calls against this SQL service as a resource, nothing changes in terms of the API calls or the code that you're using. But let's see what's happened now inside of public DNS. So if I redig the same failover group FQDN, we see that the first line has changed here. So now I'm being redirected from SQL failover group dash database.windows.net to SQL dash east US database.windows.net. You see that how that's very different to what I had before, which was West US. And this is happening inside of public DNS before the second line, which is where the private link C name kicks in. So again, let's put that information in our newly updated diagram. Okay, so public DNS has been updated down here. Nothing's changed in terms of my Azure DNS private zone. I still have a single zone there. And I've still got those same A records that I had before. My SQL server is now failed over. This East US endpoint is now my primary. And let's go one step further to jump ahead and highlight the region down scenario. Okay, so my primary region has failed. Still that global DNS zone exists. Over here, inside of East US, my data has been served from that other SQL server. And as you can see, because my redirection happens in public DNS before private link can get a hold of it, fundamentally, that means that I can have both the primary endpoint and the backup endpoint simultaneously inside of the same zone, which is a single point of truth for this private link that database.windows.net subdomain, because they are separate endpoints, ultimately. They're se separate private endpoints that point to separate resources. Therefore, the masquerade FQDN has helped us leverage the public redirection, even with private link here. So now if you think about what would happen in terms of private DNS resolution here. Let's think about this virtual machine, 172.16.1.4. It's now making a call to the same FQDN, this SQL failover group FQDN. If we look at the behavior from the virtual machine, that will highlight why this works without any sort of user intervention as we had with storage. So whereas before we had that redirect happening to the West US database, which is now in a failed state because the region's down. Before it was returned in 4.6, because that's where my private endpoint for WS endpoint pointed to. Now, because of that change inside of public DNS, I'm getting back a redirect to my East US endpoint, which ultimately returns the A record of 1.6, which is my local private endpoint. So we've achieved the same thing here, which is routing to a local private endpoint, which is reachable because the other region's down, 
using a single global zone. Now, the, the other considerations still apply. There's an element of suboptimal routing that happens here under normal conditions. But the point I wanted to make here is that there's a difference in behavior between some path services on Azure, depending on how they make use of public DNS. Appreciate it can be quite a lot to take in, especially if you're coming at this fresh. So again, uh, please refer back to the white paper, uh, which lays out the different scenarios here for each of these services and also drills into the hybrid scenario. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you've got thoughts on how this integrates with your production architecture. And I'll chat to you in the comments. Thanks a lot. I'll speak to you in the next one.